All right, guys, I'm here at the house uh, with my dad. My He actually got uh, the part in a little bit faster than we were expected. This is the part that we think is going to make the, all the difference when we race John next year. And it's this guy. Well, this is half of it right here. Uh, this is the gear vendor's overdrive. Uh, we've got the other half in the car. He was he started without me. I guess he was a little anxious. Um, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave about halfway through the video. But he's going to keep recording to show you guys kind of the install here. Uh, but... Essentially, this is going to give us that uh, is be able to split the gears in half is the idea, right? So you'll go first, right. second. Like, yeah, second over will be like having four tens, so you won't you won't pull away like you did. Right. You'll be able to reel him in. Well, you'll be able to keep him from reeling you in is the idea because you had him in the. Yeah, in I will put snow tires on this thing and race him in the <laughs> snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about we might need it here soon? What two days yeah, supposed right? to snow? I told you, man. Season's really about over. Pressing, right. But anyway, mm -hmm. so the idea is that uh, this this modification here, which what cost you about three thousand, all done. Mm, yep. So it's really not that. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, to go out there. Yeah, that's a lot, really. When you think about it, for for just the overdrive unit, you know, a lot of guys are spending that on a transmission. So it's it's you know it's a big investment, um, but uh, it gives you it gives you the advantage. Uh, that the newer car, new cars have now. So, right. keep, keeping you in the power range, it's it's worth. We'll see. We'll we'll see if it's worth it right. or not. We'll know. We have a measuring stick that we got beat. And this should this should cancel that out, and um, we should be able to uh, uh, run better than we did. And uh, we'll see if it uh, if it if it proves worth it. Cool. All right. So basically, what what issues have you run into already? <laughs> I know you just, well, we, just had, we had to move the uh, tranny loop and we got some, uh, it's not, yeah, yeah, some, it's some yeah, right. And, uh, but I have a, I have a plan, I have a plan for it. So we're going to use the location of where the tranny mount was or the tranny, I'm sorry, the dry shaft loop. Okay. Was we have to move it back 18 inches. Right. So this is, this is the old tranny loop. So it was right in here. Now it's got to go back here. And for the people that don't know, explain what that does. Well, this is in case your U-joint snaps on the front of the drive shaft. Which is over there on the floor. Right. And so that the drive shaft will bounce around in here and not hit the ground. Because what it, if it hit the ground and grabbed, what it would do is actually flip the car. Hmm. So that's why they... That's why, well, that's why that's they, why they, they make that. it mandatory on a drag strip that you have one of these in so the drive shaft can't come down and eject the car and do something stupid. Yeah. So, don't worry. You could, you know, end so up your pooper, you know, because you're sitting right around in here. So you could <laughs> get, you know, let's keep, keep the drive shaft out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like the worst of the two options, to be honest with <laughs> you. Right? Nobody likes a drive shaft shoved up their ass in the middle of a race. It's not a good, uh, not a good feeling. So, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, bring you back in when we uh, get the rest of the unit. Right now, I'm doing doing the, uh, the measurement for clearance for shimming the uh, adapter on. Once we have that, then we can bolt the adapter in, get her get her uh, siliconed up, and bolt the adapter in and. Uh, uh, put the put the unit on. How hard is the install? You know, it, it's it's you know on a scale of one to ten, this is about a three. It's um, not terrible. Not bad. Not you, know, terrible. It's, you know, it's time consuming. Make sure everything's right. But Who's going to cut your drive shaft down? I'm going to send that down to uh, the drive shaft cutting company. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. Know, that, I had that when I had an aluminum one in years ago. And um, back in the day when I had the aluminum one in and it was lightweight and all those things, for those out there, I recommend steel because uh, aluminum is not as strong as steel. And at the end of the day, that, that one there... Uh, uh, Sell up to some abuse. Work. Huh? Sell up to some abuse. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That one has. The aluminum one didn't. First time I went to the drag strip with the aluminum one, it, it snapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm not saying they're all do that, but... I'm sure there's some out there that have been tried true and whatnot, but I'm a steel kind of guy. I'll, I'll, I'll carry the extra weight I feel for you. the extra strength. Yeah, I mean, you're not really saving any weight with this car anyway, so. Yeah. 
So anyway, so yeah, so what I'll do, guys, I'm gonna leave the camera here with the hey, old man. One, one note: take a look how long the dry shaft is, and then you can see how long it is when it comes back, because it's going to look a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's, what is that? A good five foot right now. Yeah. So. So when it comes back, it's going to look like. Just so you, just so you know. It'll be, huh? so this way. It'll be that long from here to there. Wow. <laughs> that also that also builds, builds strength. Yeah, it's less that's less that can break. Yeah. It also builds strength into it too. So. Oh, cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna leave the camera here with this guy. I don't know how well the video is gonna turn out from this point on, but. At least you have an idea of what's going on. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'll leave the video here. Um, he'll take. Does that thing have bleep? When you go, can you bleep it out when I start swearing? I something? haven't figured that out yet, but I really need to figure that out because you swear a lot. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> That's because I work on cars. <laughs> uh, I need a nerve sound here for my for my car. Huh? Uh, I want to put. Um, you know what I'm doing right now, hon? Look at this, friend. You know what I'm doing? Guess what I'm doing? Come here. You gotta tell you what I'm doing. Come here. No, no. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I want to show you something. Come here. I'm putting. I'm putting this old. I'm putting this new tail on this old shaft. What do you want? Chicken or fish? Chicken. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so I just put the tail shaft on and tapping her in, making sure that's the right line here. And here's what I'm checking. Check this across, and what I got to do is check, make sure I have less than twenty thousandths. And we have fourteen, and she's rubbing so. Feeling pretty good. Just to double check. I'm gonna double it up. Go to 30. And I can't get it in. There you go. Perfect. Alrighty. So we now know that we're in good shape there. I'm not gonna bore you. I'm going to next step. Get the bolts out. Do a crossing pattern and bolt the tail shaft to the uh, transmission and then we'll be ready to install our training mount and then the gear vendors on it would be the the next step after that well as you can see we're upside down a little bit here but what we've run into a little issue is see this doesn't have the plate behind it and on this one really didn't need it too bad but in this case it just so happened i remember i had one from about six years ago and how crazy is it that i knew i had that son of a bitch anyway i'm not saying i'm a genius or anything just saying i don't forget where my parts are in my somewhat distraught garage at times inventory's in my brain for you weak-minded mothers, you need a computer. And actually, I could use one as well. But until I learn how to use one of those to keep inventory in the shop, I'll have to use my brain. When that quits, it's probably a good idea that I don't work on cars anymore anyway. So, how's that looking for a sweetie training mount? Okay. Training mounts in. Jack's ready to come out. How about that? Now, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna check without a gauge now just to make sure that I have clearance and no issues with my shaft. Man, if I told you right now, my clearance. Should be good and is not. But we have to go back and take it all apart again. 
How about that? Okay. So if any of you have ever done any hot riding or any aftermarket anything, you know that sometimes you have to put it together and take it apart in order to do it right. And even if you do that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be 100% or anything like that. But what it means is that you've done 100% of what you're supposed to. And then you can blame it all on aftermarket junk if it don't work out. However, I've had good luck with this stuff in the past. And we need 20 thousands or less. And we have 20 thousands or less at this point. So, we are in good shape. On to the next step, which is put the transmission mount back in. So, transmission mount part two. Okay. Let's see. Well, what I've come to find out is getting ready to put the training mount back in. And I'm not comfortable. And I think why I'm not comfortable. It's because when I was taking it out, I kind of felt like something was not feeling 100% right. So I looked at this and I'm, I'm like, why am I able to move that with my hands and pull that apart like that? So I would think that maybe it had to do something with the brake torques and shifting and carrying on. However, in order to complete our project for right now, I can remove this later. And I'm going to order a new one. And I'm going to put this one in temporarily. So we'll be back after this temporary training mount is in. Okay. What we got now is I just slipped this on. All I had to do was turn this and line the splines. Okay. And now we're, we're in business. So if you can see it, this is the air vendor unit. It's attached and all I did was turn the spline slide it right in and now all these bolts are right here and here's where I got to tighten it all I got to start all the bolts and tighten them all in and then we'll be back and I'll show you the rest of the installation all right your vendor is in so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the wiring the plumbing and then we're gonna measure up our uh, drive shaft and we'll stay tuned that's where we're at okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to measure the drive shaft i don't know if you can see this or not i'm going to give you an idea what we're going to do is measure from center cup to center cup and i'm going to put my play in against here and against the uh tail shaft so i'm going to pull in and I'm going to measure out that, okay, I'm tight against, even with a bump, at three quarters of an inch. Well, I'm going to come out right to inch and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure center cup to center cup. A little bit of play. So... Center cup to center cup is 34 inches. Dead nuts. 34. 34 inches is what our length of our draft shaft is going to be. So now we need to get her cut. And that'll give us some play here to where we can slide it in and out, get the draft shaft in and out, and still have plenty of room. As you can see, that inch and a half. We still have plenty of room with all that. So we have about three inches of coverage inside the shaft, which is giving us a half inch, which is more than enough. So we're back on our. Uh, overdrive unit and what we got is we got our speed uh, sensor connected and we routed it over to here we're going to tie all this together I have some ideas with that we got some wiring to run here here to the solenoid the speed sensor 
What this is going to do is it's going to tell us when we're below 15 mile an hour and it will automatically shut itself off so that it goes back into regular first, first without the over on. So you could put it in automatic mode or even in manual mode and it'll still shut itself down uh, and put when you're in first gear at a stoplight it'll drop back down into first, first gear without the overdrive on. Um, pretty neat unit. Um, we're getting in uh, closer. I'm gonna go in now and uh, figure out where we're gonna run our wiring. My first instinct is to bring it down through as we have a hole here, which is right underneath the console. And that's where we're gonna probably drop our wiring down through to come in and grab it here and here so we don't have to drill any more holes in the car than necessary. Drive shaft is no longer here. It's been sent out. What we got is about a half inch to five eighths of play between the uh, drive shaft and the uh, rear for a measurement, which is what they want. And uh, we got our fluid out on the countertop so that I don't forget to fill the overdrive unit. All right, I'll bring you back once we have the wiring done, and I'll show you where we lay it out at. Okay, so we got our wiring harness. Okay, we have our fusible link. We have our indicator lights. And the way I'm gonna separate this to make it easier when you're figuring out your wiring is what I'm gonna do is simply go in car, out of car. So, this is the wiring it's got to go to get wired and loom to the outside of the overdrive unit this is all of the wiring going inside to control the uh, overdrive unit so I'm going to find a good location to plug my wiring harness in and install our computer so generally doing what I normally try to do is judged by the wiring length and uh, the convenience of area, but I'm going to mount my fixtures first and then plumb to them, or wire to them. So I'm gonna mount this fixture, find a good spot and location for it, and then I'm gonna run all of my wiring uh, from that point out. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all wired up. This is our uh, dimmer switch, which they, which they use for a, um, uh, manual uh, overdrive button. So you move, you click this, and that'll that'll get it your, your overdrive using in, in and out. Here's our wiring diagram. Okay, so I'll get back to you and show you show it all all wired in, nice and neat. Okay. So we got our wires all hanging and we found a little spot in the floor to put them up through and then we got to tie these up together and get everything buttoned up down here. But all the wiring is dropped right through the center console and I'll show you what that looks like when we get up there. But wiring underneath is almost complete with a little bit of uh, wire ties and uh, clamping her in. Should look pretty good. Okay, where you been? You're missing shit. All right, we're back and we're wiring. Now, unless you like watching paint dry, we're getting into this. So at the end of the day, we got some wiring to touch up, fix up, make look pretty. And then we got to mount some of our uh, lights and I'll show you some artistic places to put the shit. However, I'll bring you back when we're about buttoned up underneath the car is done so all the exterior wiring is taken care of we're now looking over here we have to move our light dimmer switch and then put our gear vendor switch which appears to look the same in this location and then move our dimmer switch up or in another location we'll get we'll get back to you there on that we have to mount our uh, indicator lights for our gear vendors and also our automatic gear vendor switch we have to mount that and we're plumbing in and wiring in all the wiring and again I'll bring you back after we're all buttoned up because watching someone wire is like 
watching paint dry. See you soon. So, what we've done here, removed our aid shield, you can see, and I've drilled two holes. Now we got to clean up the holes in there and get all the uh, debris out, but that's where we're going to put our indicator lights. Now, this looks like a stock gauge setup in my car. However, I got to tell you, everything that's in there is actually custom, you know, uh, from changing painting the bezels around the outside red to match the the car and they were black and getting the silver gauges to match the factory gauges down there which were silver so now we're going to put our overdrive unit in there and slide the little lights in there so that uh, it's in good visibility so i know when the unit's actually on and when it's not uh, so we're going to do clean up and then we're going to install the uh, lights and finish up our wiring as we're got some little odds and it's tightened up yet so what you notice is that we're in the garage and it's quite quiet. And when I'm doing wiring, I don't really turn the music on or anything like that. Not because it's it's better not to have any distraction. You know, you don't want to be using your tools for drumsticks and shit while you're doing wiring. You want to be paying attention so you only have to wire it once and don't blow anything up. So, in short, what we have left is... Idiot light switch and idiot light and our uh, automatic mode switch. So what we're going to do now is run that all to a location I think that uh, will best suit us and be most convenient when I'm driving. All right. So we're plumbed in, wired up, I should say, not plumbed in. Here's our on off switch for the... Uh, auto drive and here's our dimmer switch which is the push button to manually install manually turn on the overdrive and there's where I put the indicator lights looking a little factory in there and then there's a green one that'll come on on the other side over here when you're actually running down the road and the red one will go off so that's pretty cool um, wiring's done inside and out now we're going to fill it with fluid and wait for our drive shaft and we should be able to put it together and she should be installed pretty cool man i'm liking it sounds better too you found out what it what the timing was off right timing is a chip chip was bad on the red limiter chip was bad it's fucking Starting to break up at 35 miles. So you got two issues: the rev limiter chip and the time and the, the timing, timing was off. Was off. Instead of uh, needing third gear, 
second over. Okay. And um, and it does that automatically once you have the switch on. Well, uh, I, you can have it. You can have it do it automatically, or you can uh, do it manually. I prefer to do it manually. Okay. Thanks again, guys, for checking in. Um, as always, we appreciate the support. Uh, you know, we're hoping this, uh, we're hoping the gear vendors here gives us enough to beat John next year. We think it's, we really think it's going to be a difference maker, but only time will tell. So next season, you guys will see it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot.